Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Ultimatch, which is brought to you by Fireside Games. It's for one to five players, ages 10 and up, and games generally run about 20 minutes. Great minds think alike, and great teams make Ultimatches. In this cooperative game, you and your fellow players will team up to match cards and make your way to the top of the pyramid. Ultimatch is an exciting, colorful, and very addictive game. Make clever matches by number or color. Will you use one card or two? Addition or subtraction? Mix colors, yellow plus blue equals green. Will you risk a card now or save it for later? Can you guess what card your fellow players need? Make a perfect match of both number and color to feel the thrill and gain the rewards of the Ultimatch. So setup here is going to be largely based on player count, from the pyramid to how many cards in your hand, and so forth. So in a four player game, you're going to have a six level pyramid, and you're going to be making matches in order to remove cards, and then work your way up the pyramid in order to win the game. Now if you come to a point in the game where everyone has to pass, and they can't make a match, then you all lose. So really, you need to work together in order to make all the matches and make it to the very top. Remove the last card to win. Now, one of the main tools all players have available to them in order to make these matches is the alternate hand, the alta hand of cards. Now, the way this gets set up is that every player at the start of the game will add one card to this. You'll all add a card face down and then flip it over and that will become the alta hand. And you'll be able to use cards from here in order to make matches. You can discuss the use of these cards, but you can't show or reveal your hand of cards to your fellow players. So, making matches is the name of the game here, and there are numerous ways to make matches in this game. However, there's only a couple ways to make that ultimate match, but you can simply use one or two cards from your hand, from the alter deck, and again, remembering that you can talk about what you want to use in the alternate deck might make sense. Now, the simple way to make matches in this game is just straight up the number or the color, which will remove the card from the pyramid, moving everything to the discard pile. Also, you can do subtraction or addition in order to make the number possible. Or you can combine two colors of cards in order to pull off and achieve the color of that card. Those are all considered not to be an ultimate match. Now, the ultimate match is really what you're after because this will give you more cards in your hand, more cards to work with, and so forth. So, in order to make that ultimate match, first, if you just have the color and number match, that is gonna be key. You can use addition and subtraction this way, and then you'll get to draw two cards. If you do draw two cards, you'll take one to your hand and you'll get to put the other into the alternate deck. Now, also, the other way you can do it is by using two numbers again, but also combining colors in order to match the color in that row. So, a lot of the different colors you can do that with. Not every color, but like the purple, you need a blue and a red. For the green, you need a blue and a yellow. So, there's lots of different options to how you combine colors to make that ultimate match as well. Ultimate matches are really the key thing you're after, because if you don't make an ultimate match, then you won't get to draw cards adding more to your hands, and as you start to move up this pyramid, you will start to run out of cards, and you come to a point where you'll have to pass, and then everyone ends up losing the game. So on your turn, you're gonna be trying to make these matches, but before you actually try to make a match or take your turn, every player at the table can offer you a card face down. Now, no one can talk about or reveal the card they're trying to trade you but they can give you gestures, they can suggest with their eyes, they can give you thumbs up, like this should be a card you should grab, but you can't talk about it. So any numerous ways that you can say to orient the card, to give a clue about is it high, is it low, things like that you can do, but it's up to the player to decide if they wanna make that trade. If they do, they take the card and give you one of theirs. So hopefully that will help them and definitely in later rounds, you're gonna to wanna to do this to keep players from passing at the table because that's gonna be key. What happens if you can't make a match? Well, then you simply draw a card and pass which is not good. But if you do make a match, then you'll pull the card off the pyramid. And if it reveals a card on the next row, then you can flip it, giving you more options, more matches you can make as you try to make your way up the pyramid. So, but again, you're after those ultimate matches, trying to get more cards in your hand and into the alta deck and trying to help out your fellow players by trading cards. And those are really the key things. But those matches and how you perform those, a lot of time you're just gonna have to wing it and go and not get ultimate matches it will happen that way quite frequently but when you can time it and get colors and numbers just right that is going to be one of those epic moments in the game as you clear the pyramid and make your way to the top and the thing here too is that every time you play you're like oh we didn't survive we didn't make it but let's play again because 
it just is that addicting as you move through and you're like, we're gonna beat this pyramid. We gotta do it, we gotta do it again. So making matches and ultimately making really effective trades is what will win you the game. Now, what I like too is that they have this handy reference guide leading you through the steps and what you're doing on your turn, but more importantly, showing you all the possible trades on this card. Just super handy and helpful for new players, but once you get into it, it's very intuitive. And I like that it's quick to teach and fast to play. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here is done and ready to go. If you want more information, go check out their website. You can pre-order the game now. For me, I love cooperative games, and they did a nice job with this. A lot of decisions to be made around, should I trade a card to help the fellow player, or should I save it to make a match on my turn, or should I use one or two cards in making a match and work your way up the pyramid, knowing that you're starting to get thin on the cards that you have in hand. So going for those ultimate matches to get more cards in the rotation is definitely key. And there's been so many games that I've played that we've been like one or two cards away from winning and then everyone has to pass. So keeping those trades up and doing them strategically through the game is definitely a key aspect for sure. Now folks, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games, we do top tens, we play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.